Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. It's Thursday, November 15th, 2012, and this is my website, ggnonline.com. Uh, also on YouTube, DDarko2012 and DDarko2013 on my YouTube channels. You can check those out. The, all the headlines that I cover will be in YouTube's video description. Um, I have a poll up here. What issue is uh, most important to you right now? Uh, majority of away from my computer here, uh, 52%. Uh, followed by General Petraeus's affair in the Libya cover-up and the economy at 32% and 16% politics. So we left off uh, talking about the Syrian rebels, our mercenaries for the West to take down Assad's uh, sovereign government, uh, expanding their holdings along the Israeli border, taking most villages along Israeli frontier. This is, of course, part of the operation. It started about a month or two ago. Israel knew it was coming because they started to um, tell some of their citizens uh, to leave that area. So they've been already been evacuated uh, within the last 30 to 60 days. So this is not like Israel didn't know. Uh, strangulation by triangulation. Rebels seize villages in Israeli uh, Syria buffer zone. It goes on and says that according to the report, which cites an Israeli military and intel source, 200 or more rebels took control of this uh, Bir Ajam Bariqwa. So early in the month, Syrian military caused a stir when three of its tanks entered, uh, prompting Israel to raise its alert levels and complain to the United Nations. Of course, this is, like I said, this is BS because um, this is the whole plan was to take Syrian forces and to fragment them so they're all fighting on different sides and they exhaust their resources. Um, so it's Turkey working with Israel. And it's so it, this is like the, this is the mine uh uh, this is the mind trip was that Turkey most Turkish citizens hate Israelis they hate Zionists and yet Turkey is at the head of this also that they can get EU membership and like I've said before Turkey uh, there now I'm seeing articles about how Turkey is going to be strong and they're going to be the next Iran and uh, you know and uh, a CFR article about how Turkey and and US relations are going to become real strong so what does that mean? Uh, Turkey's going to become the next Iran, like Iran could, is quite possibly a puppet state for the New World Order. So they're going to be like this big uh, a front for, for Islamists or Muslims, right? Kind of like in Egypt and other places, you know, act like they're Muslims when they're not, to cater to their people. So this same thing happens in Lebanon as well. That's why there's been strains uh, with, not really between Lebanon and uh, Syria. They're usually pretty strong, but... Uh, you know, it's been known, it's kind of sparking some some tension there because they're going over the border to chase these rats, these rebels, over the border. They fight and then they run. Uh, but we covered, what, about uh, this Free Syrian Army accusing Israel of aiding the regime, which, like I said, I basically broke it down. Uh, this is cultivating and exploiting the hatred incurred by their calculated, blatantly provocative policies. I'm talking about Israel and uh, uh, calling people like Mubarak and Gaddafi uh, Zionists and, and Jew lovers and stuff like that to have their own people turn against them. It's psychological. These guys are they're, they're genius. I mean, to be able to take all that hatred. Can you imagine pissing everybody off in the world and then taking all that anger that's supposed to be, you know, that originates from you and then just totally... Um, um, turning it towards someone else, towards your enemy. I mean, that's mind control, man. Mind manipulators. They're really good at it. They have it down to a science. So it goes on and it says that uh, Barbara Slavin and Laura Rosen at Owl Monitor reported on Monday that U.S. officials told them Washington was considering offering a more for more deal with Iran based on the fuel swap deal from Obama's first term. It says, so why does Israel's impending war on defenseless Gaza have to do with Iran diplomacy. So it says, here's a tweet from Tehran Bureau Chief, New York Times. Uh, forget any Iran-U.S. talks if conflict in Gaza escalates. Iran leaders can never be seen as talking to U.S. while its eternal ally Israel assassinates Iran ideological allies. They're posing the question, is Natyanu knowingly escalating military tensions in order to avoid a successful diplomatic overture? He says, uh, the writer says, I'm speculating, but it is, isn't far-fetched. This is another possible reason too because they like i said they're they're increasing settlements they're pushing for it and it says uh that uh, what a former cia middle east analyst says he referred to this week as natiana's tension stoking brinkmanship to defer attention to continued israeli occupation of palestinian territory 
and uh, basically, like I said, expanding more. Now the situation situation may have reversed. Israel is escalating war with Gaza to maintain deadlock with their favorite scapegoat, Iran. The next up, does Washington really want diplomacy with Iran? An apparent volt face, Obama has revealed that the U.S. has decided to resolve the so-called Iranian nuclear dispute by means of dis uh, diplomacy. So this is the quote uh, that Obama told the White House News Conference on Wednesday. With respect to Iran, I very much want to see a diplomatic resolution to the problem, saying I will try to make a push in the coming months to see if we can open up a dialogue between Iran and not just us, but the international community to see if we can get this thing resolved. So, um, you know, it's like I, I said before, Iran's, Iran is open to talks. They've tried before. They've allowed them into their country to inspect them. Um, but, you know, this is the thing. The West doesn't want to talk to, talk to them, to Iran, unless Iran tells them what they want to hear, which is, no, we don't have a nuclear program, or no, we won't do it. As long as Washington is surrounded and politically manipulated by serpentine Zionists, there is little hope that they may engage in any meaningful dialogue with the Islamic Republic. So it's not quite clear if Obama really means well. But something worth noting, Iran foreign minister says hopes for deal on UN visit to suspected nuclear military site. Saleh's comments come ahead of upcoming talks with the IAEA in Tehran. UN believes Iran may have conducted explosive tests. So, yeah, they're hoping that the talks will uh, get them off their back, I guess. Then another satellite from Iran, Iranian satellite, is off the air. Remember, I was just talking about this. Uh, Russia's satellites went down. Uh, but prior to that, it was Iran's in Europe. Asia Sat takes Iranian channels off the air in East Asia, coming out of Hong Kong. So they've taken all Iranian channels off the air in East Asia. This is, of uh, course, uh, because of a U.S. law recently signed by Obama. So to impose sanctions, anyone doing business with that. Almost 40% of Asia Sat's shares are owned by GE, which itself is owned by an American company says that um, in a flagrant violation of freedom of speech, two satellite providers, uh, Udasat, uh, EU basically, and Intelsat, stopped the broadcast of several Iranian sat uh, satellite channels in October, citing pressure by the EU. Then we have Syrian opposition says West has promised military aid. The new national coalition claims its accountability and unity has assuaged concerns about arming rec uh, the rebels. But Obama says he's not prepared yet to recognize the Syrian coalition or rebels. The president would not defend the meddling already taking place. So the Obama regime led the effort to establish a new Syrian coalition, handpicking people to convene in Qatar this month and pretend the opposition is unified. But obstacles like links with Islamic jihadists still remain. He believes the new council is legitimate. Uh, representative aspirations of the Syrian people, but he said, we're not yet prepared to recognize them as some sort of government in exile. That's, of course, because it's failed, just like in Libya. So they don't want to, uh, they don't want to um, basically uh, recognize their own mistakes. But they will say they're legitimate. Because if they're not legitimate, well, then nobody else will recognize them. So it's just, it's a circus show. Obama said that the U.S. has not made a decision to directly arm the rebels yet. However, this was misleading because the CIA is already participating in facilitating the delivery of weapons from U.S. allies in Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. Does anyone looking for hints that Obama supported recognition of the opposition and arming them now is disappointed, writes this uh, Daniel Larison, the American conservative, quote is saying things could change in the new year, but so far it appears the U.S. is resisting pressure to be pulled into yet another foreign conflict, but U.K. is ready to jump into the fire. That's right, sending troops and um, airlifting them in, airlifting and having RAF, uh, Royal Air Force, invoked uh, no-fly zone over Syria. So they're all about it. France grants its recognition to Syrian rebels, of course, they told them to set up their own government, so of course they're going to do that, right? So, no real surprise there. Then you have Turkey recognizes new Syrian rebel group as legitimate head of Syria. So again, of course they will, right? They're the ones that are behind all of this as well. And finishing up with Syria, Syria honors press TV correspondent Maya Nasser. So, of course, he was killed by the rebel terrorists, and they had held a ceremony to honor the memory of press TV correspondent who was killed by the foreign-backed insurgents in the capital city of Damascus. Nasser's father, who was also among the participants, delivered a speech in memory of his son saying that Maya lost his life, 
To reveal the truth about the Syrian arrest, he was shot by a sniper while reporting live on September 26, 2012. Then next up, we have Afghanistan. The U.S. negotiates another deal on post-2014 military stay in Afghanistan. So everyone thought that they were leaving, right? Well, I didn't. It says they've launched a first round of controversial talks over extension of presence of U.S. forces in Afghanistan beyond 2014. So there's just too much there to lose for the West, um, whether it's the poppy fields opium trade or... Um, or just a strategic area, buffer zone between Asia, Russia, China, and all that, but also the rare minerals. Uh, the curse of commanding the Afghan war. I think they even have oil there, I'm not sure, but the curse of commanding the Afghan war. So these are the four people uh, that have all gone down. It says General David McCarran, June 2008 to 2009. Whether any of this, these reasons were uh, actually have any validity to them, I'm not really sure. The firing was seen as rejection by newly elected President Obama of, con of his conventional warfare approach in favor of the more targeted counterinsurgency strategy of working to undermine insurgents' pull on the population. So, yeah, when Obama came in, he was all about special forces and not actually having some kind of presence so people could say, oh, the West is occupying here. So Stanley McChrystal from 2009 to 2010, so he had a background in special operations but uh, he also came in with a mandate to remake the war effort with the help of surge of troops ordered by Obama. Now, so that's interesting. And it says here that a year into that push, an article in Rolling Stone quoted McChrystal's uh, team making disparaging comments about their commander-in-chief. Obama called McChrystal back to Washington to explain and force him to resign. Followed by Petraeus from 2010 to 2011, he was there to fill the void left by McChrystal. And lastly, John Allen, uh, July 2011 to the present, he was appointed by Obama to oversee the drawdown of U.S. and international forces. But his nomination to become the next commander of the U.S. European Command and the commander of NATO forces in Europe has now been put on hold, as he's now been alleged of inappropriate communications with the whole Petraeus the Afghan massacre involved multiple shooters, says the investigator. So here we go again. Remember, first they said they had multiple shooters. Then they said that they didn't right before the trial, and now the trial's kicking off, and they're saying they did have multiple shooters. So where are those guys, you know? Bales ignored. We are children, shouts Afghan witnesses say. So it goes on here, and it says that the Afghan children awakened in the dead of night with a terrifying warning. An American soldier was in the village, and he had shot at least one man to death. He killed my man, their neighbor's wife cried. And it says his older brother shouted, we are children, we are children, only to see the sh soldier, sorry, shoot his sister. So it says Pakistan and Afghanistan reach out to insurgents. So that's a nice thing, right? They have jointly appealed to Taliban-led insurgent groups to participate in the Afghan political reconciliation process at the end of the war. Pakistan developing combat drones. So that's real nice. It says uh, Islamabad, which publicly condemns the attacks by U.S. drones, are going to build their own drones so and they can rally about uh, you know drone strikes uh, but they'll be coming from themselves so I don't know how they're going to deal with that uh, as far as their people go who don't want them because they're taking all that cash from the West so they have to keep doing them Iraq's Kurdish region sees economic boom remember I just covered this about uh, Kurdish economy rising they're helping to create an independent homeland so I think that's part of the plan US AFRICOM ready to consider requests for Mali military support this verifies what I said last time in a set of videos earlier this week about uh, the Mali invasion is ready, pretty much set to go. So now U.S. AFRICOM is ready to support them. Mali, French troops won't go to Mali. So just like everything, they're, they're going to push all this, but they're not going to go. Must be learning from uh, the United States and that uh, in the U.K. to just arm the terrorists, arm the, the minority groups and uh, the extremists and stuff like that. And have them do your dirty work. Something slipped under the radar from November 6, South African police planted knives on dead miners. The video also showed dead workers were in handcuffs. Talking about the South African mine shooting last August, police planted weapons near the workers' dead bodies following the protest. If gunmen killed two Chinese workers in Nigeria, yeah, China is trying to buy for Africa's resources as well. Beijing Automotive Works opens taxi plant in South Africa. From August, Zambian miners killed Chinese manager during pay protests. But it may not be what it seems. China's misplaced concerns over workers in Africa, they say, they're urging Chinese embassies to do more to protect Chinese nationals. And that Chinese workers are there to help raise these poor Africans out of poverty. The Chinese workers are already extremely well protected living behind these vast walled compounds. 
Prior to the Obama visit, Myanmar releases 452 prisoners, although they don't know how many of them are political prisoners. Makes sense, though. U.S. destroys Syria. We're propping up Cambodian dictator. Thank you.